again, it's been a while since I've uh, posted a video on uh, Red Barn Boats. Uh, it's been a little bit too cold in the barn and I'm working on uh, doing the takeoffs from my computer program uh, for the uh, Granville Bay right now. So I will start up again uh, sometime in February when it gets a little warmer out so I don't have to uh, uh, waste a lot of electricity heating the, uh, the hull up so the epoxy will set. But I did want to do something today uh, kind of nautical, but uh, uh, on another sidetrack, I developed a, uh, a hitch about two years ago uh, after reading an uh, article in uh, Cruising World magazine by uh, Beth Leonard about uh, using uh, drogues and then uh, using uh, hitches in order to make a wide bridle arrangement from where the, uh, the drogue would be up here and would come down and would Y out to the boat so you could move it from side to side to orient the boat in between the Y. Uh, but I couldn't figure out the icicle hitch. I uh, got some books and then kind of figured it out and I went to a boat show in Seattle and saw Brian Toss, the uh, author of uh, The Rigger's Apprentice and a whole bunch of other books. And he showed me the icicle and we couldn't get it to stick on this piece of uh, metal tubing he had. Um, so we kind of abandoned that project and I thought, well, there must be something better. So I came up with what I call the death grip hitch. It took me a while. I went through uh, several books and it was something uh, a German or Austrian uh, mountain climbing uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the thing off the top of my head now. Uh, but it was a looped rope for uh, using as an ascender. Uh, and this one also works as an ascender too. You can slide it up and down whatever you want. But as soon as you pull on the tension piece it locks like a drum. It's, that's why I call it the death grip hitch. It just locks down on whatever it's attached to, whether it's a slippery, slimy pole like this, which I never did get an icicle hitch to stick on, where it, when I pulled on it, it didn't pull it all the way up. So uh, let me uh, reset up and we'll go to tying. Okay, we're going to give this a go. One of the things you want to remember is that the load that you're trying to pull is in that direction. The tensioning, say uh, the winch on a boat, is going to be that direction. The drogue or the sea anchor is going to be that direction. We're going to tie this so that the load of the death grip hitch will be taken up in that direction. The hitch can be tied in either direction, and I will do that later. Okay, so. we'll do one more time. Actually, the repetitive is good for you. One, two, three, four. Bring over the working line. Come over the fifth coil, come up in between them, over the top, back down in, and then start working your way back up to the other side. And this one's going up in between, and I'll rotate this a little later to show you that it just lies up in between. It goes underneath this pulling line. Go around a couple more times. Keep them loose so you can pull this bitter end up underneath them. And go over here so it gets smooth. Okay. And you can see what we're doing there. And then pull out this one and then run that bitter end underneath it. So what it does is when it pulls down tight on the line here, which is this coil, it chokes its own tail. And then you can take all the slack out of it and there you go you can put tremendous amount of strain on this thing I haven't been able to uh, break a line yet and I've used the uh, 5 to 1 purchase tackles on a couple tree or in a, a rope tied behind some trees but even though it gets under tremendous amount of strain you can still slide it back and forth Put it on strain and it locks like a like a vice, a death grip. Let off the slack, you can take it down. It makes a nice ascender. Or if you um, use a, a line for an anchor hauser, uh, you can use this as a secondary backup. Put it through on its own separate fair lead. Tie it onto your main anchor line. Slack this off if you need to uh, slack the main anchor hauser. Uh, just take up tension on, on the uh, death grip hitch line, slack off this to a new spot, move your uh, chafing gear, slack off, you know, and then and, and set this line again, and then slack off the uh, death grip hitch line, 
and then you're back in business. Um, you can also, in case you fail to get back up and um, this line does chafe through, you've got this. If you want to be really doubly safe, and you're running, say, 5 eighths or 3 quarter inch uh, line, you could have a couple more 5 eighths lined up in series down your anchor hauser or whatever you want to hold uh, as backup. You can have one, two, three backups, and then as one pops, uh, you got something else that's going to keep you going. Uh, can't, can't rate this high enough. I want to get one of the line companies. Uh, like uh, New England Line or uh, Samson or one of them to do a test on it. Uh, Brian Toss was going to try to get them to do it, but they seem to be too busy doing other things to give this hitch a uh, test, a strain and a wear test to see how it does. Uh, I've used it on Spectra and it uh, grips hard, uh, but I didn't have winches around to see whether or not it would compress the Spectra and uh, make it slip. Uh, I think if you made these things more coils, you might even be able to uh, get it to uh, work on a stainless steel um, a shroud, um, maybe a head stay or a back stay, uh, and then use it as a, uh, a safety. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. If you uh, see this and you uh, have a boat, uh, go down and try it and let me know whether or not uh, this will work. So there we go. I will, um, let's see, yeah, well, here's the other one on the red line, and you can see how it matches up and then when it goes around everything's smooth. If I was to rotate this one, I got too many things clamped to it now. It would look just like this. Even though this one's only, um, I believe I used three coils instead of four before I went and did the uh, over the top. Okay, we're back with another kind of line this time. <laughs> I know it'll be the, we'll tie it this direction. One, two, three, four. Okay, we bring over the working line. This will be the one that gets tension. Bring it down. We'll make our fifth coil. Come up in between. Over the top. And that's the trick. Over the top. And then start working your way back. Twice more, and then underneath itself, and this one, which is the choke hold. Twist all the slack out of it, and there we go. Same thing, the other direction. Same part, it slides. It was a lot of friction on this. Okay, and then the thing I've also found too, I thought that I would have a hard time getting this knot undone, but even when it's had a lot of st stress on it, pulling it down, compressing it, choking it on, on the other rope, all I've ever had to do is grab this, pull out the slack, and the whole thing just kind of rolls apart. Then it's a fairly easy knot, but the, if you find one that sometime you know has a, a lot of strain on it, you can stick a fit underneath of it and work that up. And as soon as you get a little bit of slack in it, then the whole thing rolls undone. So there's the gripper hitch, or the death grip hitch as I call it now. Okay, that concludes this little uh, video on tying the death grip hitch. A uh, little interlude while I uh, finish uh, doing the takeoffs on the computer for the, uh, the new boat. Uh, if you have any more questions about this, uh, make some comments, and if you want me to do it again, I can uh, do it again. Uh, it also works good on chain, too, when the, as these coils will fall into the links and grip like, you know, like a death grip. Uh, but they can still be able to loosen them up and slide them down, so it would make a good line, hitch to tie a snubber on a, on a chain anchoring system if you happen to be into that, or for anything, you know. Uh, talk to you later, and we'll be building a new boat starting sometime middle to the end of February. And I'll show you how hard my easy boats are to build. Bye-bye. Or is it how easy my hard boats seem to be? Oh, we'll see.